Nicolás Montes también. If we go back to 1842 and we tie the portion and plan, we've got the same shapes there. We get a bit more information here because in these two green areas, although you can't see it because it's a bit fuzzy, that top field there is number 1037 and it's called Far Northy Hill. And the one underneath it is 1042 and it's called Near Northy Hill, which rather suggests that there was a Northy Hill visible yeah. to some degree or another back when this was being farmed. So, okay, we've come back 170 years, there's still no development, but I think what we've said is that we know where Nordley Hill or North Low Hill was. How do we tie that back to North Low Field, which is what we're trying to look at? Well, <clears throat> in the mid late to 17th century, there was a chap called John Huntbatch, and he lived in Fenston, and he was an antiquary or antiquary. I never know how to pronounce it. So he was interested in what we call an historian these days. Um, he was quite a notable collector of historical manuscripts. He copied parish registers, family records, documented the histories of the titled families. And then about 100 years later, the Reverend Stebbing Shaw wrote all the writings he could find about Staffordshire together into one big book, so it made it easier for people to find them. And he relied quite heavily on the Huntbatch manuscripts. What remains of those manuscripts are at the Stafford Record Office. And Huntbatch mentioned four lows in the Wensfield area that had been there, but he said that North Low in his time was the only one that was still visible in the landscape. Uh, there was a chap going around about the same time writing a history of Staffordshire called uh, Robert Plot, Dr. Plot. Um, now he says in his book that nothing was visible at all. So you've got two people within a very short space of time saying the opposite. But I found other references in plots where I thought you haven't gone far enough, mate. You only need to do a bit more research and you'd have found you could have amended that sentence. So I think I'm going to stick with Hunt Badge, particularly as he only needed to get on his horse and come from Featherston to have a look. And then 1615, this is where we tie Northley Hill to North Low Field. There was a chap whose family came from Warwickshire who he didn't own, but he had control under his own landlord of quite a lot of land in the common fields of Wensfield, and he had a wonderful name. It was Hercules Underhill. <laughs> I wonder what his wow. dad was called. <laughs> <laughs> but in not, it says specifically in his um, schedule of his lands that he held 63 acres in North Low Field, which he divided up into 73 parcels of varying sizes and shapes. And four of these parcels do relate to North Hill, and they were occupied by a chap called Thomas Russian. Two were described as being under North Hill, meaning at the bottom of, and two were described as being on top of. So we're 200 years before the 1842 tidal portion plan we looked at, but you've still got those two areas being mentioned as far or near, upper and lower, under and over. Mm. So. This is the first one that says to us, Northley Hill was definitely in North Low Field. Okay, well, how does that help? Well, oh yes, this was just very really interesting really. These were all the sub-names of all the little fields in the big fields. And you'll find quite a few butts in there. <laughs> you can see Barkers and Cox and there's a black, no, he's a red, red butts down the bottom there. Um, all of those areas have sort of disappeared now, but there are some which look as though they might be familiar. So, Old Heath, mm -hmm. Wood End Corner, yeah. Bellamy Lane End. Yeah. So, because we can still recognise those today, we're going to use those three to see where it takes us. This is an enlarged bit of the 1842 tidal apportionment plan, and I've left those shapes in because we know, at the very least, those shapes have got to be in North Low Field. So everything else has got to tie back to it or neighbour it. Right, this is a bit where you need to concentrate. <laughs> Old Heath. Oh, dear. Come over. North Low Field. Yes, North Low Field. It says that North Low Field lies above Old Heath. Now, there are lots of places called Old Heath, particularly when you got to 1842. But there's a little bundle of them that are 
here. And I can say, you can definitely say of that, if those are in North Low Field, then North Low Field lies above those particular blocks of field. So, okay, that's one bit of evidence. And then number two is, we've got land from North Low Field along the road that leads from Wensfield to Stafford, and that gets mentioned back as far as 1310. And you think, hang on, I didn't know there was a road that went from Wensfield to Stafford. Well, the evidence for that comes a bit later, in the 1700s, where a chap's making just little sketches of all the land that he owns, and it's in separate parcels, it's not joined up. But these, look, are all called Long Knolls, and we've just seen that that is Long Knoll. And if I twizzle it round a bit, you can see that says Stafford Road. So, there's Long Knoll there, which hasn't changed. And so we know that that has to be the Stafford Road, and it must have gone across into what we now call Angus Lane because it's got to get to Westfield. And you cannot trample your neighbour's turnips <laughs> just because you want to get to Westfield quick. So it's actually got to go around the existing field system. Okay, so we're beginning to hem in the area bit by bit. Uh, we get another mention, land next to the hedge of North Low Field and a lane that leads from Wolverhampton to Presswood. That's 1348. So Presswood's at the top there. This is the lane. It's still there now. It might have had its sharp corners even down to me, but it's still the lane from either Wolverhampton to Presswood or Presswood to Wolverhampton, whichever one you want to call it. Which means that those bits of land are either going to be along there or probably along there. I'm beginning to favour the lower one because everything seems to be complicating in this area. But we will just have a few squeezes of Hercules and his um, data. So he mentions three lands in North Low Field at Wood End Corner. Right, there's Wood End in that horrible yellow thing. And there's the main road, which is more or less there now, Wood End Road. So we're looking for a corner. Well, there's a corner there, and a corner there, there's a corner there. I don't favour the last one because it's too close to Wood End and that had its own development cycle. So I think it's likely to be one of the other two. And then, again, landing North Oakfield at Bellamy Lane End. This green wiggly thing is Bellamy Lane. It's still the same shape now, again, except that some of the hard corners have been ironed out. So, you know, which end of Bellamy Lane? Well, again, I don't favour the top end because it's too close to Wood End. So it's probably there. Now, I'm seeing a pattern develop. I don't know whether you can, but this is, I'll get rid of all that, this is the pattern I see. There, just north of that field. Now you might say, hang on a minute, isn't that a bit convenient? It just happens to fit into all the roadways. What are you doing? Well, it isn't really that unusual because if you had a field called North Low Field, and we know they did, somehow or other, people who go there to work have got to be able to identify it. You've got to be able to separate one piece of land from another. A lot of fields originally had things like trees and hedges and stones to give a rough boundary and then man-made ditches to join them all together. So over time, they reckon that so not, not pathways between far-reaching communities, but local pathways and whatnot developed around the existing agricultural system. So, as I said, you can't trample your neighbour's turnips so one way around or another. You've got to actually move around the field. And we've seen bits in the middle here, we've seen bits on the corner, we've seen bits at the end of there, we've seen bits coming down from Prestwood, we've seen bits coming up from Old Heath. It is all hemming that particular area in, which in 1842 was about 117 acres, and they reckon um, the size of a common field, depending on the size of the settlement you were looking at, was somewhere between 100 and 200. So I think that's actually a pretty good stab in saying exactly where North Low Field was. And let's hike our way around Wensfield, basically, having a look to try and find where North Low Field was, and a couple of other quick mentions but using the same process, a place called Fenny Idiot. 
back to the map, I've left the blue bit in. Now, in the mid-1500s, there's a mention of a King's Highway that led from Prestwood towards Vendelidiot. So there's Prestwood again. Okay, road could be going in either direction, couldn't it, really? It just says from Prestwood towards this place, we don't know where it is. Go back a few hundred years, and we've got a deed that talks about land lying in length between the portway of Vendelidiot and in breadth along the road which leads towards Wolverhampton and North Wales Field of Westfield. So it does mean that if you put those two together, you've got to be coming down the Prestwood Road. You can't be whizzing off up the top because you're going away from North Low Field. You're not going towards North Low Field. And then the last one, again from the early 1300s, mentions a piece of land lying next to an assart of Richard Bellamy at Fenilidiot, extending up the road which leads to Stafford. We've seen the Stafford Road. That's Bellamy Lane. There's the Stafford Road. Okay, so how does that help? Well, it helped because in 1842, this is where the Red Lion is now, and I think Alexander House is just a bit further along. In 1842, those two pieces of the land were called Fan and those two pieces there were called Fan Lidget. And given the way that pronunciation changes over time, I think, and, and the way that all those descriptions fit in, I think we can say that those are the places that were called Fenny Lydiot way back in time. And one more quick one, Lackley's Place, or Lackley's Hayes it became known as. Um, I'll have to extend the map, sorry. Wentzville's now right down the bottom. And Ashford Park, right at the top. Um, 1315. Gift of land by the Dean and Chapter of the Church of St. Peter to a Mr. John Lapley and Julia, his wife, hence Lapley's Hayes. And this was three and a half acres of waste on the Black Lee, lying next to the highway that leads from Wensfield to Litchfield. That's the Litchfield Road, and again, it's pretty much the same now as it was then. So somewhere along there is where it is. 1493. Two pieces of land are mentioned as lying together called Lapley's Place and Solomon's Moor. So find one, you find the other one. I don't know who Solomon was. Well, I know who the old Solomon was. But. And this extends in length up to Stubby Lane that leads to Ashmore Gate. That's Stubby Lane, so somehow it's got to come in length up to Stubby Lane. And there's the Ashmore Gate Road. Uh, pretty much where it is now, except that all there is in Ashmore is the field and the central house. And then 1785, there's a document that mentions Lackey's Hayes in Wensfield adjoining the lane that leads to Ashmore Hall. So it's got to be here somewhere. And what do you know? It is. <laughs> On the 1842 tithe apportionment, those five pieces of land are called Lackey's Hayes. A few intriguing mentions that you can't follow up because they don't join up to anything in the modern environment so it's a bit unsafe to try and um, locate them. Early 1300s, there was a cottage at 12 Pennyworth land and that was next to the mess suite of Old a Smith. So somewhere in 1300, we had a blacksmith called Old. And there is a John Old who witnesses a few, a few um, land transactions, so that might have been him. 1352, um, we've got the thiefment, the granting of a piece of pasture called Sheepcoat Folds, again in Wensfield. I haven't got a clue where it was, but we know what they were doing. <laughs> they were keeping sheep. 1376, a piece of wasteland in Prestwood. Waste just meant it wasn't productive for some reason, but it might have had gorse and shrub growing on it, there might have been water. But it stretches from opposite the house of Matilda Atwood as far as the assault of Nicholas, son of Robert, at the spring. So somewhere near Prestwood, there, is, there was a Matilda Atwood living who had her own house, and this piece of land stretched as far as wherever there was a spring. Wouldn't it be nice to know wherever that spring was? And the, the high land is all up on Ashmore, isn't it? Yeah. Spring Hill Lane, yeah. all that is yeah. at the top, is the top. Yeah. Um, where we have the field in Kitchen Lane, there's a spring and it's still there, they just called it and you can stand on it near it. 
No Millbank Street. Yeah, you were telling me the other day, yeah. that's probably it then. Yeah. Well done, yeah. Phil. <laughs> yes, <laughs> generally then. There were many, many, many mole pits, most of them in my back garden. Um, in 1890, just to show you a little bit of how deeds got a bit better in terms of historians trying to find out what was where, um, there was a conveyor.